If you are brand new to tennis, I recommend that you start with the intro to tennis video. But if you've just watched that video or you're already familiar with the basic rules and how the scoring works um, and you're looking for a little more, in this video I'm going to go over a few random terms that you might hear if you're watching a match that, to help you get a better understanding of, of the game. Um, I'm going to go over these pretty quickly and you can find more info about all of them online. Wikipedia has a really good page called Glossary of Tennis Terms um, that I'll leave a link to in the description. And that could be a good page to have open um, if you're watching a match and you hear the announcer refer to something you don't know. But to get a general idea, uh, here we go. So first we'll start with a few things about serves. One term you will probably hear at some point during a match is something you might also hear in volleyball, and that is an ace. And so an ace is a serve that is not touched by the receiver, automatically scoring a point for the server. And so players that have a really fast or really accurate serve will probably have a lot of these. It's pretty simple. So next we have a double fault, which as you probably know, the server gets two chances to get his serve into the service box. And these attempts are known as the first and second serve. And failure to get second serve into the service box, and remember that the line is in, would result in a double fault and thus a point for the receiver. And then they would have to switch and serve toward the other service box. At some point you'll probably hear somebody make reference to the game point. And this means that if the server gets the next point, they will win the game. Um, the opposite of this is that the receiver could win on the next point, and this would be called the break point. You might also hear something called a double game point. This means that the server has two chances uh, to get the point to win, so that means the score is 40 to 15. So even if the receiver gets the next point, it will be 40 to 30, and then it will just be game point at that point. Um, you could also have a triple game point, which means that the Score is 40 love, and so the server will have three chances to score one more point to win the game. And similar to game point and break points is the set point, which means that one of the players is one point away from winning the set. You may also hear someone say that the server is serving for the set, which means the same thing. Um, because you have to win by two points, obviously it can only be the set point for one player or the other. Finally, the final point of the final game of the final set of the match is known as the match point. Uh, try saying that five times fast. And again, you could have triple or a double match point. So next we have a couple different kind of shots, and you'll quickly catch on to just how much strategy can come down to where a player is trying to hit the ball. Maybe they're trying to take advantage of their opponent's weakness, and if the opponent perhaps doesn't move very well, they could perhaps employ what is called a drop shot. And this means that the player just barely taps the ball over the net, and that would force their opponent to run forward. Uh, that can be very effective in a match. As I said, if your opponent doesn't move well or they've been running a lot, it doesn't have to be, but drop shots often come without letting the ball bounce first. So this will make a shot tougher to control, um, but it also means that it'll be heading back toward their opponent much quicker. So anytime a player hits a ball before it bounces, it's called a volley. And if you have a volley that also happens to be a drop shot, this would be called a drop volley. One thing you might see reference during a match is the number of errors each player has. And an error is a shot that either lands out of bounds or hits the net, um, thus losing a point for that player. And this is broken down into forced and unforced errors, which are a bit subjective. But a forced error is an error that was a difficult shot, say a, a well-placed uh, drop shot, possibly, on their side. And they, they're unable to hit it back over or hit it, hit it um, in bounds. Where as an unforced error is a shot that the player probably should have been able to return. One thing you will only see on TV and you probably won't have to worry about if you're playing tennis at the local park is challenging calls. Uh, every match will have line judges watching to see whether a ball was in or out, but high-speed cameras are obviously 
going to be more accurate in this case. So each player gets something like two or three uh, challenges per set, I think. I'm not certain on the exact number, and it can change depending on if they get the challenges right or wrong from tournament to tournament. Years ago, players would just yell at the judges, and that would could cause long delays. But luckily now, the computers are accurate down to something like three millimeters. So that's pretty cool to see, and of course it's pretty... And of course, it's pretty tough to stay upset at a computer. So our final term is the Grand Slam, which refers to the four biggest tournaments of the year, the four majors. And these are the Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open. And both men and women are competing in these tournaments. And they are the biggest because they have the most prize money. They have the largest number of competitors in them. And they will get a lot of media coverage. All four of them have been happening for a very long time. And the Australian Open is the youngest of the four, and it started in 1905. Um, Wimbledon is the oldest. It started in 1877. So this has been happening for a long time. And they, the unique thing about the majors is that overall they provide a good balance on the uh, different types of court surfaces. So both the Australian and the U.S. Open are played on hard courts, the French Open is played on clay, and Wimbledon uh, is played on grass. So each one kind of provides uh, their neat uh, individual quirks. So hopefully that will fill in a few more gaps in your tennis knowledge. And again, if you're brand new to tennis, I have an intro video on how to play, how points are keep track of, uh, things like that. And also be sure to check out that uh, Wikipedia page or leave a comment um, if you have any other questions. Thanks.